A software license is a legally binding agreement made between the software developer and the user, outlining how the software can be used or shared, if the user can view the underlying source code, if the user can copy, alter, or redistribute the software, and where the software can be installed and how frequently. Once you purchase software, or even if you get it for free, you can only use it as defined by the software license. Software publishers typically use two techniques to validate a software license. First is the shrink wrap license, which license goes into effect as soon as you open the packaging. Second is the installation agreement, which is used for downloaded software. Its license goes into effect as soon as you click the option to accept the terms of the agreement. In the installation agreement, you have to agree to the terms as stated in the End User License Agreement or EULA. It is displayed on the screen when you install the software. Most of the software license agreements contain at least these sections. General Information It provides information regarding the type of agreement being established, when the agreement goes into effect, and how long it will be active. Involved Parties It provides details about the individual or company that is entering into the agreement. Terms. It sets out the terms of the agreement, such as the following. The price of the license and whether it is a one-time flat fee or requires annual fees. Access to the coding. Support, maintenance, and refunds when offered. What software licenses limits are available. Whether it is a single user license, site license, multiple user license, or concurrent use license. When we say a single user license, it limits the use of the software to one person at a time. A site license is generally priced at a flat rate and allows the software to be used on all computers at a specific location. A multiple use license is priced per user and allows the allocated number of people to use the software at any time. A concurrent use license is priced per copy and allows a specific number of copies to be used at the same time. There are several categories of software licenses. In this video, we are going to discuss two of them. Majority of software fall under these broad license categories, namely proprietary software license and free and open source software license. Let's first talk about the first category. Proprietary software licenses limit users' legal ability to change software code. It defines acceptable terms for end users and provides the most protection for developers. Proprietary software is distributed as commercial, demoware, shareware, or freeware. Commercial software is copyrighted software that is typically sold in stores or on websites. Although you buy this software, you actually purchase only the right to use it under the terms of the software license. When the terms are violated, software piracy occurs. Software piracy is the act of stealing software that is legally protected. The stealing includes copying, distributing, modifying, or selling the software. The following are some of the pirating techniques. Soft lifting occurs when users share their software with other users who are not authorized to have access. It occurs when a person does legitimately purchase a single user licensed software but installs it onto multiple computers which is a violation of the licensing agreement. Original equipment manufacture unbundling occurs when OEM packaged software is separated from the hardware it originally came bundled with at the OEM or retail level of sale. Hard disk loading occurs when hardware dealers install an unauthorized copy of commercial software onto a computer system. This occurs when a business sells new computers with illegal copies of software loaded onto the hard disks to make the purchase of the machines more attractive. Counterfeiting occurs when software is illegally duplicated and sold with the appearance of authenticity. It is usually done using a CD burner to produce copies of software. Counterfeit software is usually sold at a discounted price in comparison to legitimate software. Online piracy, also known as internet piracy, is when illegal software is sold shared or acquired by means of the internet. This is usually done through a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing system. Renting involves someone renting out a copy of the software for temporary use without the permission of the copyright holder. Some commercial software is available as a trial version. This is called demoware. 
Demoware is distributed free and often comes pre-installed on new computers. Demoware is limited in some way until you pay for it. Shareware is copyrighted software marketed under the Try Before You Buy policy. It includes a license that permits you to use the software for a trial period. To use it beyond the trial period, you must send in a registration fee. A shareware license usually allows you to make copies of the software and distribute it to others. Freeware is a software that is available with no cost or has an optional donation fee. The license for freeware usually permits you to use the software, copy it, and give it away but does not permit you to alter or sell it. The second broad category is referred to as free and open source software licenses. These are contracts that permit end users to share, modify, use, copy, and reuse a software product's source code. The term free indicates that the software does not have constraints on copyrights. The term open source indicates the software is in its project form, enabling expert developers to modify and improve the software. Open source software may be sold or distributed free of charge, but it must, in every case, include the source code. Here are some examples of open source software. The Firefox browser, Discourse, and WordPress that offer hosted instances of their software for a premium fee. VLC, LibreOffice, and other open source software usually have donation links for funding. Free and open source software are available free of cost because of the following. The source code is already available to the public. Developers find it unethical to charge for something that has been contributed freely by so many people. Some projects are supported or developed by bigger corporate or non-profit organizations. Some developers create open source projects as hobbies or out of their passion. Like free and open source software, public domain also has the potential to have no limitations on the usage of its program. When we say public domain software, it is software that allows being edited, changed, copied, and distributed with no restrictions. The software has no ownership because the developers have relinquished their copyright of it. However, for free and open source software, copyright remain. We come to the end of this video lesson. I hope I have given some light to your knowledge about the software licenses and their categories. If you find this helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you!